<laughs> What's going on, everybody? Kenneth Allen Thomas here, along with the most beautiful woman in the world to me. My wife, Mrs. Jocelyn Thomas, is here. <laughs> we are here on another episode of Unshakable Conversations with Kenny and Josie. And that's Josie, that's what they call it, in them streets. You know what I'm saying? And we are talking about silence. We're talking about silence, y'all. There are a lot of people that are suffering in silence in their relationships, in their marriages, with their children, and even with their faith. Matter of fact, even inside their own business. So we're going to address some things when it comes to silence. See, the one thing that I know about me and my wife, we talk about literally everything all the time. Like we can't go, you know, too long without speaking to one another, right? no matter what the topic is. And we oftentimes, you know, make it our business to continue always communicating no matter what. Why? Because the, the more silent we get, you're leaving room for the enemy to come in. I'm already starting to cook. It's already starting to brew. So, honey, like, you know, let's let's go ahead and dive in and everything, you know. So I'm going to toss this first, you know, question at you, right? Like, we want to, today we want to be able to give people some practical tips and advice, you know, on why it's always healthy to talk about things because so many people are talking about uh, or not talking at all and they're kind of just letting things kind of roll or sweeping it under the rug and and it's causing so much friction in a relationship where you broke up two years ago and then you're finally making the divorce now but you broke up two years ago because you know you started not communicating you know so I'm gonna just l let you get the first crack at it I thought you were gonna ask me a question I was gonna ask you a question <laughs> What some of the what is the main reason why you have been so adamant about communicating and not wanting to suffer in silence and always being so outspoken? I think the biggest thing for me um, is because I was there mm -hmm. in my old marriage. Mm -hmm. I was there. I wasn't able to communicate, mm -hmm. and I felt like everything I wanted to say, I had to kind of just put it in a bottle. If not. I would get yelled at, screamed at, probably hit, which happened, um, called a baby, um, many, many things. And for that, every time I felt like I needed to get something off my chest, I always second question, is this enough mm. to get into an argument about? Is it enough to get popped? Is it enough to be called a baby? Is it enough to be like feeling like, here she go again. I'm right. tired of hearing his mouth, you right. know? So, and it, was, it wasn't an argument. It wasn't a nag. It wasn't that at all because I know that sometimes when you nag, that can be annoying. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah. But it wasn't a nag. It was like, hey, can we have a conversation about something I found today, about something that you said today, mm -hmm. about something that you made me, some, some way that you made me feel today. Can yeah. we talk about it? And I was never given that space. I was never given that opportunity. And so for me, it's important because... In relationships, in um, with your child, with your parents, in business, in ministry, mm -hmm. with friends, yeah. it's important because if not, you're going to feel suffocated. Yeah. You're going to feel like it's going. It has to come out. Yeah. So either you're going to have to conversate about it, mm -hmm. or you're going to. It's going to be like a lid that's flipping in the heat of a moment. Why? Why do you feel like? I don't want to sound, um, I'm trying to be careful with my words here because I don't want to offend anybody, but why do you feel some women just accept it and continue to take it? You know, why, why is it that some women, um, they may take the verbal abuse, um, you know, and even some men, I, I'll speak for the men, but like, you know, some women they take the verbal abuse or the physical abuse and they don't continue to voice, right? They don't continue to uh, voice that opinion because of, you know, that, that scarcity mindset, you know? So I feel that I'm going to speak firsthand um, on how I felt mm -hmm. and then I'm going to speak on things that I've seen with my own eyes. So how I felt why I would take it is because I felt like, well, maybe he will change one day. And I would pray, Lord, change his heart. Like I want him to change. 
but we can't want it more than the person, right? And so I would hope and pray every day that he would change. And he has to want that more than I want that. Mm -hmm. And only God can do it. I can't do it. No one else can do it. Only God can do it. But the person has to be open to it and want to want to have that change. If they don't, then it's, it's not going to be a change, right? Yeah. The hardest thing to change is yourself. And I have seen with my own eyes many women afraid because it's like, well, they're the provider. So if I say something, if I leave, mm. I'm not going to be taken care of. See, the thing is, I feel like I understand that, right? And I empathize with that. But this is where I feel and why it's so important that I feel that um, God is so important in a relationship, right? And individually, why why we should have our own relationship with God, right? Because if you know anything about providing, about Jaira, he is our provider, right? He is our protector. He is the one. Like, I'm not saying that you don't need a man or a woman, you know, in your life. I believe that. I believe that, you know, I believe in marriage. I believe in that union. I believe in that covenant. But at the same time, you have to also understand that God is not going to want you in a position that he didn't put you. He's not going to want you in a position that he never placed you to be there in, in to begin with. If that man or that woman's heart is ardent, right? God is the only one that can really soften it at the end of the day. There's nothing that me or you can actually do. But what what we what we tend to do is it comes borderline idolatry in a sense where you're relying on this individual to change because you feel that this person is the only way that that they can provide for me. But rea the reality is, is that person ain't making you breathe. That person ain't making you talk. That person ain't making you walk. He ain't give you your voice box. He ain't give you your sight. He ain't give you your smell. He ain't give you none of that. Like God is the one that gave you all of that. Once we understand that it's the most high that gives us everything, you know, then that is our provider. The provider then places an individual to provide. So like me, for example, I'm only able to provide because of my provider. I'm only able to give unto you because of the one who gives to me, right? Like it doesn't, it's not the other way around. I'm not giving to you and I'm not providing for you and I'm not providing for the family because it's on my own. Right. It's because God woke me up and gave me the ability to go out and work to go get it. You know what I'm saying? So I think, the, I think the other reason, let's be real. Yep. Let's be real. Yep. I think the other reason is because women just like being in toxic relationships. Come on now. They're attracted to the drama mm. they're attracted if you if you get a good guy that's amazing that yep. treats you lovely that treats you like a queen some some women just don't like that right. if i'm being honest yeah. that's a shame yeah. some women are like uh, he's too nice he's a geek he's a cornball uh, i'm not feeling that i want someone to rough me up i want someone to talk to me like this mm. i want someone to talk down to me slap me around a little bit like some women like that right some woman like right. that because I've seen it. I've seen it, you know? Yeah. And even now, sometimes the women who like that in the past, they do like it still. Mm -hmm. And th But then there's some that don't have anyone now, but they look back and, and are like, I still like that, but I don't want that in my life. So it's very hard for them to even find someone to settle down with because yeah. it's like, I'm grown now and I don't want that, but deep inside i'm still attracted to that if that makes sense it makes sense because i feel that society has put this um in, society has made it attractive that the good guy the guy that's not you know um you know trying to rough you up the guy that's that's really not into the 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 bad boy lifestyle you know that's the geek that's the cornball. That's that's like yo, that, like that's that bull is weak. Like he's never going to protect you if something goes down. He's never going to protect you, right? And then the guy that is is the bad boy, the rough rider. You know what I'm saying? The guy, the guy. You know, number one, I pray for those dudes. I pray for those dudes because the reality is, is that they trying to they trying to more so protect themselves. 
right? We don't want to talk about that, though. We don't want to sit there and really, you know, call it what it is. These guys out here, they don't. I don't believe that they really, really deep, heartily want to live this lifestyle. Like, their situations have brought them into a position that have, um, you know, warranted them to protect themselves in such a way that they're so deep that they feel like they can't get out. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, like, they may feel um there's a sense of on the flip side they may even feel like there's a sense of control uh inside that home right maybe they grew up and they were abused in such a way that where when i grow up i'm going to i'm going to do the same thing but i'm going to have control over my house so i'm going to have control over my woman i'm gonna have control over my kids i'm gonna have control and it, it becomes more of a power struggle for them versus you know i lived this life so long and i never got anywhere I lived this life so long and all it got me was downfall after downfall after downfall, right? And then it becomes like the toxic relationship becomes so bad that your own woman would disrespect you, you know, and and try to steal away your manhood, which ramps you up even more, right? And it's this tit for tat type of thing. Like then y'all start going back and forth and then we just sit there and say, well, yeah, that's just how we live. That's not really normal though. You know, that that's that's not a healthy relationship in my personal opinion. And I feel that there are so many people that, you know, why would you want something negative in your life? Why do you feel like you need to feed into those negative things? I mean, a lot of times it's because of things that they saw growing up. It's like that's the only thing that they know. And they know. It's the only thing they know how to receive. Mm -hmm. And like I said, maybe a couple episodes back that we had talked, I said, we're the generational curse breakers, you know? Mm -hmm. And so why would you want your kids to see that if you saw that, you know? So if anything, we should be trying to do something different, do something different for our kids so that they don't have to grow up being this person or feeling like they're on the other side, not that they're the person who does it, but they feel like, well, this is all I know. Mm. So I'm expecting this man to hit me. I'm expecting this man to cheat on me. I'm expecting this man to rough me up mm. because that's all I know. That's all I saw. Yeah. We as women, like we should be better than that. We should be allowing our girls and our boys to know that they're better than that. Not like, I have to sit here and receive that. So, you know, us training our boys to be men that don't do that. Us training our girls to know that they don't have to receive that, that they're better than that, mm -hmm. that God has someone and something and a better plan for their life that it doesn't have to continue. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel like, you know, as much as, as much anger as, as they have, the anger is very loud but the peace is very silent and we don't speak the peace. We don't speak the peace into our lives. We don't um, prayerfully seek that. And I also feel like a lot of times people are suffering in silence so much because they've distanced themselves away from the Holy Spirit. They distance themselves away from God. They've distanced themselves so much that this is all I have right now. At least that's what they feel. And I wonder, I wonder what would happen if we prayed more. I wonder what would happen if we, if we surrendered. I want, I wonder what would happen if we said, you know what, God, I give up. I'm going to give it unto you, right? You're the only one that can fix this, right? Now that doesn't come without some form of work, right? Because nothing changes, you know, until you change it, right? If everything, everything is staying the same is because you're allowing it to stay the same, you know, and nothing changes until something changes. So therefore, my recommendation to people is, you know, ask yourself the question, how long are you willing to suffer like this? I don't care if you got millions of dollars. I know there are people out there suffering. I don't care if you feel like you're in the best physical state of your life. I know there are people out there suffering. I don't care if you got the best body in the world and everything. You're a workout freak and you're, there's something that's going on where you're still suffering in some form of a silence, right? And there's an abuse that's happening and you're distancing yourself away. So the question is, is how long are you going to remain silent in that aspect, whether that's in a relationship or in your parenting, right? 
But what I'm what am I saying? What I'm saying is is when are you going to get back to the source at the end of the day, right? Because some people have distanced themselves so much that they've received so much success in a certain area, whether it's marriage, relationships, you know, uh, fame, fortune, money, whatever, that they distance themselves and thinking that I did it all, I've made it, right? But there's going to come a point in time where you sit here and you're going to look back and you're going to say, like, what exactly really did I do? What did I do in this world? You know, when you were sitting there talking about, you know, what you were going through, you know, with your ex-husband, it reminded me of what I was going through with my ex-wife. It reminded me of the abuse that was happening inside that home, right? The abuse that was happening from, you know, my manhood just being, you know, trying pretty much to, be, to yeah, belittling me or, you know, de demasculating me, you know, as a man. And, like, there was an argument every single day. And I'm wondering, like, yo, why do we have to keep fighting every day but over the stupid? Nobody yeah. wants to live like this. People do, though. But, right. but why? Like, right. I mean, I get why sometimes. Like we said, it's just something that they're used to or they just they never yeah. were, were taught to communicate. I know my ex-husband, he had a lot of daddy issues mm -hmm. and he wasn't raised with his, with his mother or his father. Um, he saw his mom more than his dad. Like he didn't know his dad until we got together and he was about 25, I believe. And that's when he started having his dad in his life. And it's like all these men that his mother was with, it's like. That's all he knew was that in and out, in and out of, of their lives, you know, and then it was no communication, on, you know, in their lives. And then so then when when we got together, I didn't know that because it was a max that mass that was put up until we were months into the marriage and we were living together. And I'm like, right. whoa, like right. what is going on? You know, Shh. like you need help. You need therapy. And he knew it. And as much as I tried to get him to get help in therapy because we were already married, so it's not easy to leave at that point. It's not like we were dating and I could have just up and, and left. And I would be like, hey, go get help. Yeah, I'm going to go get help. But he would never go seek help. Right. And so it's one thing when you're in denial. It's another thing when you admit it, but you're not going to get the help. So that was a big issue. And then now in my mind, I'm like, OK, my two younger kids are seeing it. I have a boy and a girl. My boy is going to think this is how you treat a woman. My girl is going to think this is how I'm supposed to be treated by a man. Wow. And until we got out the situation, I'm like, Lord, like, I don't want my kids to think this, you know, I don't want them growing up to think that this is how life is supposed to be. And so praise God that we weren't in that situation too, too long. Like some people are, because then it just becomes an everyday life. Like, oh, okay, well, this is just the norm. Like, you know, I, I'm going to just mask this with something else. I'm just going to hide it with something else. I'm going to be happy over here just to cover up that I was just at home crying or that I just saw this or felt this or I was just hit. So when I go out into the public, I'm going to mask myself and I'm going to be jolly old happy over here because, you know, I don't want people to think that something's wrong with me. But deep down inside, I have wounds deep down inside. I'm hurting. Mm. And right now I'm getting emotional because it is real. People yeah. are literally facing this. And I hate to see and know that people are going through this and they're not getting the help. Mm. They're not allowing themselves to heal they're putting a bandage over their wounds right. and just not allowing it to be open yeah. and get that natural healing mm -hmm. which is therapy if you need it which is counseling which is you know seeking some form of mentorship going to god the holy spirit which is our first and foremost source obviously mm -hmm. you know it's just there's so many resources there's so much help why do you feel that this is the norm for you to live your everyday life it's not mm -hmm. It's not. And then you're going to be wounded and then you're going to put those wounds on your kids because the phrase that says hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay uh, in an abusive state of mind. You don't have to stay in a relationship that's going to, um, you know, put you in a position that this is the end all be all. And a lot of people end up in a, in, a, in that particular situation and you stay there longer than you have to, right? And I'm not sure who this is for. I'm not sure, like, who needs to hear this. But you've been going and suffering far too long. And 
God is sitting there saying, maybe he's speaking through me to y'all through the screen or whatever the case may be. It is time. It is time to step out on faith. It is time to sit here and say, you know what? Enough is enough. I love you, but I can't stay here. Not just for yourselves, but right. your kids. Yeah. If you have kids involved in situations like that, it's like it's not just you. I, I think that you are important enough, yes. But when you have kids involved, it becomes a thousand times right. even more important. So please just stop thinking about yourself. Yeah. Think about those kids. Right. And the Bible says to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are older, they will never depart from it. So we've got to be careful with how we are training our children, right? If they, if we train them up in the way that they should go, right? Not in the way that you want them to go, but the way that they should go, right? And, 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 and change that aspect, then we're going to break those curses. We're going to break the, those generational cur curses and everything in our life. I feel like, like there are, there are some people that are needing to just step up to the plate at this point right now, right? And I remember like in my household where I never seen my, my parents, um, like I never really seen them interact with one another from a um, emotional and affectionate type of way, right? So for years, I wasn't really like an affectionate type of individual. I still work on that now, you know? Like I work on, you know, trying to be more romantic, right? But what I'm saying is, is that there was like a silence that was there. And that silence that was there, you know, maybe it came from their background. Maybe it came from how their upbringing was, right? And they they even put, you know, the children before themselves, right? They even put, you know, my brother and my sister and everything, you know, above their marriage. And that's just my personal opinion. I've told them this. I really feel like that. And they they never really, in my opinion, uh, worked out the issues um, in a in a healthy way. They they would they would talk about these things. I, I don't even know if they talked about it. It always would end up in some form of an argument or a fight, but it never has to be like that, right? And that's why I'm so adamant about you know how how we live our life today, right? Nipping that thing in the bud quickly so it doesn't escalate. Right. Or coming back, you know, once you once you finish blowing off some steam, you know, let me come back because I don't want because that's a form of abuse, too. If you continue to um, silence what just happened and just sweep it under the rug like it didn't happen when it really did happen. Like we always say we talked about it the other day. We always talk about keeping it real. So let's keep it funky. Right. Let's keep it real. Let's not continue to sit here and stay in this in this box of. All right. Well. That's that's just another argument in the box. Yeah, you keep throwing this argument in the box and this argument in the box and this argument in the box and not discussing these issues. Eventually, this thing is going to blow over, right? And then you're going to be a holder of all these arguments that are in your box and it's going to be all inside your house and you're not going to know where to place anything. You're going to get so wrapped up in all these arguments and things that were never settled. You're going to be looking around your house and all these boxes are just here and there's no room to fit in love. There's no room to fit in faith. There's no room to fit fit in you too. There's no room to fit in your relationship on how you should go because guess what? You continuously are always putting stuff inside a box. And if we're being honest, I think a lot of the little tit for tats, tats that, that, you know, turn into big arguments are, um, just like things that could be settled in one conversation at that moment. And sometimes it may not be that very moment because sometimes you may need to cool off and that's okay too, but don't let time, it, it's the, the Bible says, don't let the sun set, right? Yeah. So before you go to bed, make sure that thing is fixed. Don't, don't let that thing linger overnight. And then the morning you're waking up, you're not going to be okay. That thing is still lingering, right? Yeah. Yeah. That thing is still lingering. And then it's going to make you even more frustrated because you're like, oh, well, we just started our day, but last night wasn't resolved. Yeah. So why, since last night wasn't resolved, now our morning's going to be not good because yep. now I'm still frustrated with you because what happened last, last night, night, right? So work very hard to fix things when they first happen. Even if you still need a little bit of time to walk away, to cool off, that's okay. 
but fix it because mm. they're going to have to come out. Right. Yeah. And I think that a lot of if we really sit and look back, honestly, let's put me and you. Yeah. If we look back at our arguments that we've had mm. when we first started dating the first five mm. years, whatever. Yeah. Number one, we probably don't even remember what we used to argue about. Not at all. Number two we'll probably laugh at some of the things that we argued about. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like, is it really, is it really that deep guys? Like, yeah. is it really that deep? Like think about the things that you're arguing and fighting about. Is it really that deep? Yeah. There's a level of silence where people need to start raising their voice in many different ways. Right. I feel like from a relationship, let's go from a relationship standpoint. There are men that you need to raise your voice to dig deeper um, into the mindset of your spouse, right? The mindset of your children. Like, why do you feel that your children are acting a certain way? Why do you feel like your spouse is acting a certain way, right? Or why do you react a certain way as well too, right? Sometimes we just don't self-reflect and everything enough to um, to understand like, you know, there is an it, a underlining issue right it's here that we're not, issue. it's a root issue, right? And we're not addressing that root issue. Like if you don't get to the bottom of it, if you don't get to the root, like then you're just saying to yourself, I'm just going to sit here and deal with it till the day I die. But who wants to really live in that type of capacity at the end of the day? Because I sure don't. Like there were things that I've done in my life where I'm like, you know what? I got to change this about me because if I don't change this about me, then this is going to um, to pretty much go on to my children. And I don't want that for them. I'm not like the you know, the end all be all or anything like that. I'm not a superman. I don't know everything. What I do know is that if I'm in the wrong, I need to self-reflect. If I'm in the wrong, I need to sit there and take accountability for my actions. Like we sit there and say that we men, we sit there and say that we're grown women. We sit we sit there and say that we're grown at this, that, and the third, but why can't we be grown enough to sit there and take accountability for our actions? You know? There's this thing that I used to always read, like on social media, it floats around. It says we're all grown until we take a, until it's time to take accountability, yeah. tell the truth, have a hard, good conversation, all of that. Like we say that we're grown until it's time for those things to happen. But then it's like we peel back, like uh, I don't want to deal with it. I don't deal with it. Right. And that, and I think that that's a that's a huge issue, right? Because nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. Nobody wants to feel the embarrassment of, yo, I messed up. Well, newsflash, guess what? You ain't perfect, right? You wasn't born perfect and you're never going to be perfect, right? You were just made in a perfect image. It's a difference, right? We were made in his image and his likeness and his image and his likeness is perfect. However, that doesn't make your actions perfect because we sin all the time. Yeah. What needs to happen is we need to stop putting that, you know, we need to release that silence and start speaking and, and asking for repentance of that sin that's going on in our life and stop being silent and putting things under the rug all the time, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I was upset with you. Yes, and talk about it. <laughs> oh, oh, was did you want to bring it up or no, no? Did you expect me or was you gonna? Because you see, yes, you're, actually, you're so ready. That I was, ready to say, <laughs> I, I was, I was thinking about bringing it up. <laughs> oh my god! So this morning, um, I was wrong yeah. and I was really upset, and I you know, came at you because I was in my feelings about something. This is for all men. Right here on the so can you just, uh, this doesn't happen often, but can you please go ahead and say that, that first statement one more time? You was what? I forget what I said. Just say <laughs> They can rewind it. <laughs> you could rewind it. You know what? You, you, know what? you can do a double take. You know what? You know what? Sent you yesterday. <laughs> say, say, I'm sorry. This is that cost. And then, I'm, 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 yeah. Yes, that. But, oh. You know, I was like, all right, I need to apologize because I was really wrong. But it was hard. Yeah. It was hard. Not that hard, but it was kind of hard. Yeah. And then when I apologize, and then you always say, it's okay, babe. Yeah. And then I always say, but it's not okay, babe. It's not okay. And we get used to being like, it's okay because it's our natural, you know, and like 
the receiver of it is very humble, is very, you know, like it's okay. But but think about it. Like literally, let's take a second. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Is it okay? It's not okay. Right. It's not okay to lash out. It's not okay to be upset. It, it is okay to apologize because we're not perfect. So yeah. it will be okay, but it's not okay to keep on doing it. Right? right? And so when you say it's okay, I always say like, no, it's not okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? I forgive you. <laughs> you better. Before why I say it's okay. Because when I mess up, especially to the father, and I say I'm sorry, I repent, automatically he says it's okay. Right? His his level of forgiveness is why I constantly, anytime you say I'm sorry, I forgive right away because it's him. And I'm a representation of that in this home, right? I am a representation of Christ in this home. And it is my job. I'm not going to dwell and, and bury you and make you feel less than what you already feel. And I think that as men, we have to understand that. It's just Not just men, but just people in general. We have to understand that when someone issues an apology, receive it, right? Receive it. And no, it may not be okay, but receive that apology because it, to me, it is. Let's move forward. Let's move on because I don't want to dwell in this situation and I'm not trying to... Um, I'm looking forward to the future. I'm looking forward to what else that we have planned on today because the enemy will love nothing more than to be like, yeah, take this opportunity to uh, to give her a piece of your mind. But people do it. Right, and people do it. And this is why I sit there and say, you know, it's cool because I'm not going to allow the enemy to creep in my mind and give him any type of power to sit there and come upon my wife and sit there and say, you know what? Yeah, because you know what you should have did. You know what you da 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 da. Like and and come back and take this opportunity to to lash back. I can't do that. It's not even in my makeup, you know. Not just that, but I think that um, and even in situations like that, and if you know someone was to apologize, and the other person is to be like, whether they say it's okay or not, nah, you good or whatever the case is, right? A lot of times it's like, uh, all right, I forgive you or you good, but then they put it in their pocket, yeah. right, and they save it for later, mm -hmm. and then when the next thing happens and they say, oh, I messed up again, I'm so sorry, like I apologize, mm -hmm. yeah. Just like the last time mm -hmm. it that you did da da da, and now you're piling all these things on top of this person who is apologizing for the things that they're doing. Yeah, just because you so want nice. to fight. No, just because you want to fight, just right. because you know you you're toxic or whatever your issue is, um, you put it in the back pocket and it keeps going in the back pocket. The yeah. many times that this person is apologizing, to you and then you want to just basically vomit all the things that they have done or said to you in the last six months that they hurt you and now you don't have just a a minute to to just move on from that little thing now you're like whoa mm -hmm. you're hitting me with 10 things that i you know did to you in the past six months or whatever you know it could be whatever amount of time i'm just yeah. saying i wonder what would happen if god piled up our sorries and kept them in his back pocket man I wonder what would happen if we say sorry again over and over and over again to God and we repent for the same thing over and over and over again. If he would pile up our sorries and pile up, you know, all these different things and then at any given point said that, yeah, well, you said that last time. Yeah. Well, you know what? You did this last time and that last time and this last time and that last time to make us feel like we're nothing but yet he wakes you up yet he gives you opportunity yet he gives you life yet he gives you breath yet he provides for you right and all you got to do is say lord forgive me i accept you you know and get better right versus holding on to your pride and your ego like you know like you're the end all be all like you're entitled but you're really not you know what that reminds me of 
it takes me back to the conversation we had with pastor the day that we shared with him that our thoughts were thinking about moving and everything like that. And we had shared with him that day. I don't know if you remember, we shared with him that day that we were afraid to move forward fully because we hadn't got a hundred percent confirmation from the Lord or the yeah. Holy Spirit at that time. Right. Yeah. And one thing that he shared with us that day that really hit me was he said, even if you haven't gotten confirmation, right. And you were to go and it was to be a move where you find out that you guys move and it's like, Oh my God, this is what we were not supposed to do. Like this was a huge mistake. Yeah. Like, we were not supposed to do this. Like, sure. Oh my God, things are worse here. Like what were we thinking? All of that. Right. He said, the Lord is not going to be like, well, too bad. Right. You made a move without me giving you a thousand percent confirmation. Right. Now you got to figure it out by yourself. Right. He's such a good father. He's such yeah. a good father that he will say, it's okay. You made a mistake. I didn't tell you to move, but you moved. Not, not just geographically. I'm just saying in general, but I got you. Right. I'm going to pick you up where you fell and I still got you, right. you know? And I'm just like, wow, God, you are such a good father Thank you. to pick us up and not say, well, you're going to have to learn your lesson the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Such a so father. Good. That's so good. Check this out, right? Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, because pastor also had mentioned this. It says immediately. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 here we go. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on water, and came toward Jesus, right? Prior to that, he says, he says this. Let me just read this to y'all. Okay. Shortly before uh, dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, if it is you. See, this is key. We, 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 we missed this. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. He's not coming to onto the water on his own intuition. He's going because the Lord said so, right? And then come. This is what uh, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked walked the water and came toward Jesus. But then he saw the wind and he was afraid and began and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. So even though he took his eyes off of Jesus, right? So we can make the mistake of taking our eyes off Jesus. And as we're trying to go to this next level and then we begin to sink, this is what will happen next. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Climbed into the boat. The wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. And I just want to, I, I don't know who this is for, but some of y'all, like, stop taking your eye. You're walking on water right now. Do not take your eyes off of the prize. Do not take your eyes off of the source. Do not take your eyes and be distracted by the winds and the rain and all these other things that are trying to distract you from where you need to go. You have to stay locked in on the Lord. You have to stay locked in on the most high. I don't know how else to tell you. Yeah, maybe it didn't work out in your favor last season. Maybe maybe somebody was lost last season. Maybe you, you, you felt defeat over and over and over and over again. But I'm trying to tell you me and my wife been feeling defeat yeah. for 10 years for 10 years and we are finally receiving the fruits of our labor right you have to continue to grind it doesn't it's no it's no timetable on this yeah. stop being impatient with your purpose stop being impatient with your process stop being impatient with the things that god has for you because of what he has for you is so pure that you 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 sit there and see it you taste it and you'll be like, this is something that I've never had. And this is something that's so pure that I can never get this on the earth. I can never get right. this. It is only God. Sometimes he takes so long so that you know that it is only and not you. Right. And we oftentimes get so wrapped up in the fact that, you know, God, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. Yeah, but it ain't the time. 
And I'm not sure who that's for. You suffering in silence now because you're ready to quit. You're ready to give up. You're ready to just throw throw the talent because you haven't seen the fruit. I'm telling you, me and my wife have been going through this for 10 years, yo. 10 years. And we're in this awesome home, right? Is 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 the home like the end all be all? Absolutely not. But however, it was by only God that we were able to get this, right? Like straight up and down. Is it, is it about materialistic things? No, it's not. Can he do it? In, 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 in Russia, in a much smaller home? Absolutely. And guess what? He did many works yes, there. Absolutely. He did many absolutely. works even in the tightest places that we were in. Right? So, so, don't, so we always increase our capacity at this point. So I'm telling you right now, some of y'all, listen, man. Some of y'all right now so down and out because you need to increase your capacity. Some of y'all are sitting here and you are so tight knit in your life that you're not willing to increase your capacity and allow God to really pour into you. Imagine what life would really be if you if he was to pour into you. Christian, hold on, okay? What? All right, bye. <laughs> Not just that, but a lot of times where we're when we're in that tight space, right? He is processing us, and I think a lot of times it's like, mm. what? Why are you not doing this for me? Why are you not moving on my behalf? But a lot of times he has us in such a tight space because he is processing us, and that he he wants us to either let go of some stuff, change some stuff like work on some stuff that's in our heart mm -hmm. um he is you know just like in a processing season of us we have to take everything that we go through as a all right god i i know it looks ugly right now i know it feels ugly i know this is painful in this season but i know that you're going to work it out for my good mm -hmm. i know that it's going to be a testimony i know that my story you're going to get the glory mm -hmm. Right. Yes. It's like if he did everything for us. Right. When we wanted it. Right. How are we being processed? Right. It's almost like a bratty kid who gets whatever he whatever wants he at wants. the moment that he asked yeah. for it. Yeah. That's not what we're supposed to be. Yeah. My question is, are y'all who's really willing to get ugly? You know, like, are you willing to go through the ugliness of life? And. If we're being honest, not a lot of people want to go through that gruesomeness. Not a lot of people want to go through the ugliness. A lot of people just want everything handed to them like, you know, like you said, like a spoiled child. But, you know, my Bible says spare the rod, you know, spoil the child, spare the rod, spoil the child. Right. So be grateful that God is not sparing no rods in your life. Be grateful that he's not sparing this or sparing that and sparing the discipline that you need so that you can so that you are, you know, um, process enough to handle the storms that's going to come when you reach success is preparation. Right. If we would have got this 10 years ago, we probably wouldn't be prepared now. I wouldn't be prepared for what is to come in the future. Right. Even or not even only that. A lot of times I'm not saying us per se, or it could be us. I'm not really sure, but I think a lot of times it's like, if you get everything so easy and you don't go through hard seasons, how was that giving you an opportunity to be grateful for the good that you do have? Yeah. If you've had great and good all of your life, how are you a allowing the space for God to get the glory yeah. and B, how are you going to be grateful if you didn't have the ditch season? The ugly, painful seasons, how are you going to be grateful for the good? Not that everything's always going to be perfect because it's not, but how are you going to be grateful if you didn't have a hard season? This is why this is why I love the word so much, right? Because when you take, you know, someone like, like Simon, like Peter, right? When you take someone like him, you can just tell, like, by reading about him where he was coming from the pain that he felt, the anger that he felt, 
all the things that were pent up in his you don't get that unless you really going through some hard times some hard seasons you know imagine what he was going through with his wife imagine what he was going through you know trying to pay bills imagine what he was always going through all the time right and it's like man like yo this dude was really feeling it and then and then why is it that he's the only one that got out and said lord if it is you i will come all these other disciples wasn't even trying to get out on that boat but it was peter that was sitting there saying you know i done been through everything so guess what you know it, this can't be if i'm gonna go i'm gonna go down with the ship at the end of the day right so i'm i'm just wondering like how many how many people have a peter like mindset that is saying i'm i'm you know what lord if it's you i'm gonna go for it because i got nothing else to lose and we in and when you have a nothing else to lose type of mentality those people more than likely are going to be the most successful because guess what the only way to go is up yeah. you can't go no further than where we've been right for us we didn't we didn't deal with the fact that our son was was you know battling cancer yeah. we didn't dealt with the fact that you know both of us have been through a divorce both of us have been you know in abusive type relationships whether it's verbally or physically right both of us have been in situations where financial, financial struggles and everything negative in our accounts like you know scraping and scrapping for everything our children you know what i'm saying like there's on there's nowhere else to go but up like mm -hmm. we've been to the bottom of the bottom you know in our life for our particular situation you have injection so you probably from, from my bottom but the fact is, is that there's a bottom. That's right. Right? And, and when you step up, that's when you can go up. That's the beauty of it. That's what God is sitting there saying. So when Peter was, when Peter was at, Peter went to the bottom. He was walking on water. No other human being that I know was doing that outside of, you know, Jesus 100% man, 100% God. Right? And Peter attempts it. Some of us not even willing to take a shot. Yeah. Right? We just sitting there living vicariously through other people and we sitting there playing and sitting there living and seeing their life and then we get upset. That's so real. Take the shot? That's so real. Like take the shot. At least take the shot. Don't sit there and take the shot and be and be like, all right, yeah, I tried it for a month. It didn't work out. No, that's not taking a shot. Taking the shot is somebody sit there and say this the other day i think it was patrick bay david he said you go from first you go from interested then you go to commitment and then you go to obsessed are you willing to be interested first number one and after you're interested are you willing to commit and after you commit are you willing to be obsessed about it I because if you, it's just <laughs> kidding <laughs> you got it like it just comes first commitment comes second yeah. right and then the obsession comes third and it's like it's like with me right now i'm gonna be real like at one point i was just interested in the word of god and then when we got together right after a minute it was like you know what i'm committed to the word of god now i'm at a point where i'm obsessed with the word of god like i gotta know yeah you know, I gotta read, I read these stories over and over and over and over again. And there's always like a fresh word. And when you speak of obsession though, in, in other aspects, right? like let's, I don't want people getting, right. it's screwing that. I'm not saying obsessed like as in like. Because nothing can go before the Lord. Right. <laughs> obsessed with you know, with him, I'm obsessed with the Lord. I'm obsessed with what he has for me to do because it's going to glorify him right. at the end of the day. Not obsessed in like, I gotta. Like you know, it's my first and foremost, including God, your family, yeah, and everything, so, second, third. Yeah, right. So we must take out of context what we're saying. What we're saying is, is put it's in this rightful place. And be obsessed to become an idol to the thing. Yeah. Right? Like we should, our eyes should, towards the one at the end of the day so yeah i i'm just i'm at a i'm i just want people to go ahead and take a shot you know listen imagine if if you did give god a real chance like he gave you a chance i'm gonna say that again imagine if you gave god a chance like he's been giving you chance after chance right and imagine if you fully committed your heart to him not focusing on what i'm saying but focus on what he's saying not focusing on what they saying on tiktok 
or what they're saying on in this platform and that platform, but really focusing in and locking in on the word of God for yourself, right? The Bible says that, you know, for my people perish for a lack of what? Knowledge, right? A lack of knowledge. So search the scriptures for yourself, right? Seek him in the, in the, in the secret place for yourself, right? right? And then when you do that, to you, you know? Right, y'all. So with that being said, you know, like let me just let me just leave y'all with this. I'm gonna leave y'all with number one, put God first in everything. Stop silencing your voice in things that matter, right? Get out of the situations that you're not supposed to be in and get in the situation that he wants you in, right? And take it to that next level. I pray that this right here, you know, gave you everything that you guys needed and gave you some form of clarity. Um, I pray that it gives you, um, you know, the inspiration and motivation to move forward and seek him first in the secret place so that you can go ahead and do what it is that you need to do in your life for others, right? Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, giving him all the honor and giving him all the glory. Amen. So with that being said, everybody, please make sure you guys go ahead and follow us uh, on Instagram, TikTok, you know, whatever it is, uh, that whatever platform that you got, follow us. My name is Kenneth Don Thomas, Jocelyn Thomas, and this is the Unshakable Conversation with Kenny and Josie. Go ahead and make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment below. And continue to, we're on our way to a thousand views, everybody. I mean, I'm sorry, we're on our way to a thousand subscribers. All right, so we want to hit a thousand subscribers by 2025. All right, so before 2025 hits, we're going to get a thousand. We've got about what? something days left, something like that. 25 days left in the, in the year of 2024. So that means we're going to have to be hitting somewhere close to maybe 50 to 60. Uh, subscribers per day over the next 20 something days can we do yes we can with your help if you have been receiving good word good content and everything from us yo go ahead and, and share it like it and and you know let's build this community together all right with that being said y'all we will see y'all later on the next episode my name is kenneth thomas for jocelyn thomas we are the one and only that thomas clan and we will see y'all later on the flip side peace Christian, you did too.